Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You were the reason why this content remains! Sonic Boom! Sonic Boom! Sonic Boom! And today, we are going to discuss that actual exact thing, to be brutally honest. It's pretty common that among the vehicle world in general, planes are certainly the fastest. In fact, aircraft in general go way faster than pretty much anything else. But what are the fastest ones out of that group? Well, much like with my fastest trains ever, I'm gonna talk about the fastest aircraft ever, and instead of just spitting out a list of the top five fastest, I'm gonna give you that, but in a way that encompasses all the fastest things. Because there's certain different aircraft that have various speed records, and some of the records differ slightly based off of the vehicle in question. So, I'm just gonna give you five of those to make it a little more interesting. These are five of the fastest aircraft ever. The Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. Okay, let's just get it out of the way right now. This is, of course, the easiest one to talk about as it's the one everybody is familiar with and everyone's favorite spy plane as well because, frankly, the Blackbird is just awesome. Do you realize how old this plane is? Because people don't often realize just how effectively ancient the Blackbird is for what it looks like. Because it looks like it's out of the future, even to this day. And if you showed a person not in the know a picture of the Blackbird and said, this is the US military's latest futuristic jet, they would totally believe you. Because to say that the Blackbird looks ahead of the time is a massive understatement. But it first flew on the 22nd of December, 1964. It's from the 60s and was an absurdly expensive but incredible undertaking by Lockheed. It was developed as a black project, highly classified and top secret because of course it was. And it was actually developed off of a slightly different plane, the Lockheed A-12. Though the idea of possibly making it a bomber or a fighter was entertained, eventually they settled on just reconnaissance. It's a spy plane. That's all it's for. But it is really, really good at that role. Like, astonishingly so. And it flew so much faster than basically anything else that if a surface-to-air missile was launched at it, the standard evasive action was to simply accelerate. Fly faster than the missile. I think this is the only plane that's ever been told to do that. Usually there were other ways to dodge a missile that most other normal jets would have to do. But the SR-71 was that fast. It utilized two Pratt & Whitney J-58 Axial Flow turbojet engines, each one with a capable static thrust of 32,500 pounds. The engines were actually most efficient at high speeds, and they're sometimes called turbo ramjets because the way they worked on the plane was kind of a combination of both what a ramjet does and what a turbojet does. Naturally, due to the tremendous high speeds, the SR-71 had to be made of a very, very, very tough materials, including titanium, which was difficult to get because the Soviet Union actually had the most of it at the time. So a bunch of it was actually obtained through bogus operations and dummy corporations just for the specific purpose of tricking the Soviets into giving us some titanium to make this plane to spy on them, specifically. It's hilarious, but I suppose you would really want to know, how fast is it exactly? Official record was set on the 28th of July, 1976, by Captain Eldon W. Yortz and Major George T. Morgan Jr. This thing flew at 2,193.2 miles per hour. That's 3,529.6 kilometers per hour, otherwise known as Mach 2.89. The Blackbird wound up retired, not because it was necessarily obsolete, because again, it was very, very futuristic, but due to political reasons. They were incredibly expensive to operate, for one, and the thought was, now that they have so many satellites to take pictures for spy purposes, did they really need something like the Blackbird? Well, it's an argument that was never really settled, because some people still, to this day, feel that the Blackbird could provide things that satellites still can't. 
That being said, the son of the Blackbird is apparently in the works. The SR-72. It's officially scheduled to fly in 2025, and it's supposed to be an unmanned vehicle. Which is a little less exciting, if you ask me. Like, I really prefer the idea of a person being in control directly, but uh, hey, whatever. The Blackbirds, either way, were pretty awesome. And they hold the world record as the fastest air-breathing manned aircraft. The North American X-15. What the heck is that? It just looks like a rocket. Well, it, uh, it is. This thing first flew on the 8th of June, 1959, and was an experimental aircraft that was tested by both the Air Force and NASA. This thing was actually drop launched from the wing of a B-52. The pilot would then activate the X-15's rocket engine and just go. It was meant not just for speed testing, but also high altitude testing. And because there was so little air with how high this thing could fly, aerodynamic flight control services weren't really that relevant. So it had a reaction control system, or RCS, that used, again, rocket thrusters to maneuver it back and forth. It used liquid fuel rocket engines, two reaction motors XLR-11s, which were actually enhanced to provide a total of about 16,000 pounds of force. And that was only the original model. Eventually, Reaction Motors delivered the XLR-99 rocket engine. That thing could deliver 57,000 pounds of force. And from then on, the X-15 used that instead. The reason for the unique design of the tail was for stability purposes, as it was meant to go at hypersonic speeds, where weird stuff starts to happen that, especially at the time, we didn't fully understand. At least twice, she actually exceeded the boundary between Earth and space, known as the Kármán line, which is precisely 100 kilometers, 62 miles, above sea level. And the highest she ever was, was 67.1 miles. That's 108 kilometers. The fastest she ever flew, though, was on a different test, on the 3rd of October, 1967. This plane, if you can call it a plane, flew 4,520 miles per hour. That's 7,274 kilometers per hour, otherwise known as Mach 6.7. What? And she was being flown by William J. Pete Knight at the time. Testing was concluded when it was decided that no further data could be gained, and all three of the X-15s were retired in December of 1968. NASA's X-43. Hey look, another X-plane. They're always exciting. And it's not that dissimilar from the X-15, except this time, well, there's two major differences. One, this is unmanned, which is a little less exciting, but this is a jet. Yes, really. It's also drop launched again from a B-52, which still does everything around here. I don't know what you expected. But the actual aircraft is again attached to a booster rocket which is just a modified first stage of the Pegasus rocket. Using the rocket, it reaches a target speed and altitude, then it discards it, and the X-43 flies free using its own engine, which is a scramjet. The scramjet is a variant of a ramjet, air-breathing jet engine. The combustion in a scramjet happens in a supersonic airflow. Unlike a ramjet, which uses a shock cone to decelerate the incoming air to subsonic velocities, scramjets don't bother doing that, and slows the airflow using shock waves produced by its own ignition source in place of a shock cone. If that all sounds like crazy mad science to you, that's because it is. But it works. And the X-43 was used to test hypersonic velocities, and the effects that such would have on an aircraft. Development started in the late 90s, and the first test happened on June 2nd, 2001. Although that one failed because the Pegasus booster lost control about 13 seconds after it was launched, so that wasn't good. In fact, the X-43 suffered several failures during testing, so, you know, it's probably really good they opted to go with the unmanned route now that I think about it. Anyway, you guys want what we all came here for, which is the actual speed record. Well, there were three variants of the X-43, but the one that set the record was the X-43A variant, which, on the 16th of November 2004, flew at a speed of 7,000 
546 miles per hour. That's 12,144 kilometers per hour, otherwise known as Mach 9.83. Yo! Once testing concluded into phase one, they thought they were gonna go into additional phases, but sadly that didn't occur. The Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2, Falcon. Well, that's a boring name. Though it's usually abbreviated to HTV2, which sounds a little more scientific. This is a DARPA project, and meant to be a testbed for technologies to provide the United States with the capability to reach any target in the world within one hour using an unmanned hypersonic bomber aircraft. Oh yeah, as if we didn't have enough military presence all over the planet. Now we're coming to you within an hour or less. And the bombs are free if we're late. Actually, they're usually free in general. Because they're freedom! <laughs> we spend so much money on guns. Anyway, this perplexing aircraft is, um, it's kind of hard to judge it. It barely looks like an aircraft. It actually looks more like an arrowhead. And it is unmanned because no. And technically, it's a glider. Two were produced and they were built by Lockheed Martin. And they're made of carbon composite material because they have to be. But in a way, they were kind of a failure because they lost telemetry at nine minutes when the mission was planned to last 30. On the second flight, the speed and the heat was so much that it actually caused the skin to peel away from the structure. And again, these are carbon composite materials. These things are built to be tough. It still wasn't tough enough. Hypersonic flight is still something that we're trying to figure out around here. It's not something that can be easily achieved or done safely, hence why they generally try to use unmanned vehicles for the purpose. But how fast exactly did this thing get? Well, the record set was on the 22nd of April, 2010. That was the first flight. It hit 13,201 miles per hour. That's 21,245 kilometers per hour. That's Mach 17.2. Not quite Mach 20, but it got real close. But there's still at least one in-atmosphere aircraft that did go faster. Space Shuttle Columbia. Now before you get upset with me, this isn't cheating. The Space Shuttle program was a space plane program. These things could fly both in atmosphere and out of the atmosphere. So technically they still count as aircraft. And the record setter was the Columbia. And she also happened to be the first of the five space shuttle orbiters that flew in space. Technically, the Enterprise was built before her, but she was only an approach and landing test vehicle. The Enterprise never went into space herself. Columbia did, though. She actually had some differences between herself and her later sisters, and had more in common with Enterprise. She still had test instrumentation, as well as distinctive black chines. She also had a heavier fuselage and the retention of an internal airlock throughout her entire lifetime. She actually was the heaviest of all the space shuttles. She was in service for 22 years and was flown on 28 missions, spending over 300 days in space and completing over 4,000 orbits around the Earth. She was an impressive technical achievement, as all the space shuttles were. And can we talk about this? We as a species have managed to come together and create something that can go into space, leave our planet, and come back and be used again to do the same thing. We have harnessed the power of a literal explosion in order to accomplish this. If you were born into it like I was, you may have taken it for granted over the years, but especially when they were first created, the space shuttles were an astonishing technical achievement. Expensive, yes but amazing, and Columbia did set a speed record. She set a record for the fastest manually controlled flight in atmosphere during atmospheric re-entry. She was being piloted by Joe H. Engel at the time, and she reached a speed of 17,500 miles per hour, 28,000 kilometers per hour. That's Mach 22.8. Remember how in Top Gun Maverick, they said Maverick was the fastest man alive? Uh, no, that's Joe H. Angle and the crew of Columbia on that day, thank you. It's true, they only accomplished it by, you know, falling. But still, that's incredible. And sadly, the record is often overlooked by Columbia's tragic end. 
You probably already know about the Columbia disaster. It signaled the end of the space shuttle program entirely. I still remember the day it happened. I was 12 years old at the time. Columbia disintegrated as she re-entered the atmosphere over Texas and Louisiana. That killed all seven astronauts on board. It was an astonishing tragedy, very similar to the loss of the Challenger that happened in 1986. Though a few missions were conducted with the remaining shuttles after the disaster, slowly but surely things winded down. And when the International Space Station was finished, they ceased entirely, with the remaining shuttles going to museums. It's honestly a little upsetting that the fastest aircraft's average achievements is overshadowed by such an astounding tragedy. But you can't talk about Columbia without it coming up. I can make an entire video dedicated to the specifics of that incident. But for now, let's just say that I prefer to remember the Columbia and her crew for who they were, not for what happened to them. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Sundu267, Orange Glass, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hawk 444, Benjamin Owens, Pinsir Kitson 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Josh Johnson, Little for Life Guy, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, DM Trouble Typhoon, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Alaric Jaspers, Brian, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Major Klutz, Hayden DeGrow, Master of None, Dr. Racer 78, Crystal Morgan, and Ohio Trucker 1. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.